G'day, fellas. And welcome to the second game of Outback Octagon 2. This game will be taking place in Tasmania. Tasmania is one of those places that uh, often gets forgotten about, but today it is a place that we will remember. Not for its beauty, but for its brawn. This game is set to be an absolute banger. Resources plentiful in the center of the map. A lot of sheep, just as you Tasmanians like. And of course, water. All over the edge of the map. Oh wait, what do we got going on right now? I, I'm I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at my my other screen. Like, what's go what's going on there? Because we got the Twitch chat up, or well, the chat, the in-game chat. All right, let's begin. Let's talk a little bit about who we've got spawning in on the north side of the map in the color pink playing as the Chinese it's Poppy Boar to his east in the color teal playing as the Ottomans it's Blade 55555 to his south <laughs> his very shallow south Uh, what, can I just say, what is going on with Give You Anxiety? Where is GUA's TC? GUA? Am I blind? Or does GUA not have a TC? Uh... Where are his resources for a TC? Um, hold on. Excuse me? He did a dock? Yeah, but he needs resources for a TC. Everybody's got resources for a dock. I'm introducing players over here in GUA. TC should be free? Somebody tell GUA the TC's free! GUA's over here saving up for a TC! Oh, the madman! Oh, GUA, don't do me like this, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get back to it because we're, we're getting action early on. Over on the east side of the map. <laughs> in the color yellow, playing as the Chinese. We got Avery, And just below him, in the green, playing as the English, it is Kapoch. To, to the very south of the map, in arguably the best position of the day, 3DB on the Ottomans. On the west side of the map. Oh, GUA, I can't believe this. Playing in the color blue as the Holy Roman Empire, we've got Cal. Towards the center of the map, playing as the Rus, on the color orange, it's core. And... <laughs> playing as the Holy Roman Empire, uh, going for a no TC strategy. We've seen GUA do lots of different strategies over the years. Uh, we've seen the no wall strategy coming out from GUA. Um, we, we've seen, I, th I think we did see a no unit strategy come out from GUA once. Today we're going for a no TC strategy. Um, does it... Mm. Yeah, he, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he can just make the TC. No, GUA, are you telling me GUA's never played a free for, he hasn't played Outback Octagon yet? And, and now he's just, he's trying to work out and he's doing it all alone. This is the worst part, he's doing it all alone. Oh, now he puts the TC down. He's worked it all out. Four minutes into the game, he's like, oh my God. Oh my God, I've got this. I worked it out. <laughs> oh, GUA. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the eighth and final member of today's battle. In the south of the map, playing as the Holy Roman Empire in the color red. Give you anxiety. I tell you what, you gave me a lot of anxiety right now, GUA. But I'm glad we worked that one out. I, I was a little bit anxious about the fact that you were going to be saving up for a TC, and that was quite a bit of time. Um, interestingly, if he doesn't have a king, does he really lose? <laughs> but I mean, if, if you don't have a king, then you don't really win either, do you? Anyway, anyway, now, I'm taking bets. What's the likelihood that GUA wins this game despite his start? I'm, I'm going to put it at about like maybe if there's eight players, then it's 12.5% for each player. But it's been a bit of a slow start. He's spawned a bit close over here to Kalp in the middle of uh, B. It's a bit of a... Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with like a 
zero percent chance here but gua i'm rooting for you obviously for anybody who doesn't know me and gua go back we go way back we played together back in age of empires 3 back a, a long time ago i'm talking 2007 2008 we played together so i'm rooting for gua but who is in the best spot right now if you had to pick a spot and say i want that spot who is it going to be i think you got to go with b he's got a beautiful spot down here all alone nobody really near him the closest is gua and he's further than the market away This is a beautiful spot. The other alternative, the other alternative, the alternative, I guess, is Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw's got a wonderful spot up here towards the north. Does have to worry about this, um, but also has to worry about Core. Core's in the middle of the map. He's got a great little location. And we've seen Core on the Rus before. Core on the Rus before. The Spaskaya was absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, there was a desync there. And Look, I think it's probably time that we talk about the desync as well. We are six minutes into this game right now. There is a possibility that at this point, there, there will be a desync in this game. And the rules that we've got at the moment aren't perfect, but the reality is when you're working with a desync, you've got you've, you've to you've play with the cards that you've been dealt. And the cards that we've been dealt are that desyncs may happen. And we're going to do everything that we can to try and avoid that from happening. We've asked the, all, all of the players to uninstall and reinstall all the relevant mods. Uh, to, to uninstall as many of their mods as they, they are willing to do. And ideally, that would be everything other than the mandatory stuff. But there's the risk that it happens. And if that does happen, if it's before 20 minutes, then we remake. If it's after 20 minutes, we, we play onwards. Them's the rules. So, we'll see how it goes. GUA doing a bit of scouting there with the king. First age up coming through. It's going to be the Kremlin getting thrown down here for core. Now, keep in mind, Core has had access to the center of the map, and he has taken out every single deer pack. Not every single deer pack, but close to every single deer pack that you can find. He's picked up 18 sheep. Of course, this is Tasmania. There's plenty of sheep here. For anybody who doesn't know, we treat the Tasmanians the same way that we treat the New Zealanders. I mean, it, it, it gets a bit weird. It depends where you're from in Australia. Um, but uh, the Tasmanians are either sheep shaggers or inbreds. Um... But we're gonna go. We're gonna go with the the, uh, the the former in this situation, and uh, and say that there's plenty of sheep here. Now, one thing to note is we've slowly got a beautiful ring of fishing boats building up around the edge of this of this map. Red, pink, blue, yellow, or rather teal, yellow, green, orange. Then down here we got the purple, and then finally the blue. Beautiful little colours going up around that top side and have a look at this the closest gold available for blade is this gold in the center this is the closest gold he's got avery has got has pushed him off this and we do see it's going to be a barbican thrown down in between the two golds so looking to keep them safe avery in a bit of a difficult spot if i had to give an award out early on to the uh the, the hardest position i would say that this is probably it right here you are stuck between two of the world's best players, Blade on one side, Kapoch on the other side. Now, granted, it's probably been a while since Kapoch has played Age of Empires 4, but I guarantee you, you, you throw this guy in the ring, he's going to be just as good as these other guys. And we can see already Villager moving out yeah, yeah. towards the middle. I wonder what he's looking for here. Could be looking to throw down an outpost. No, right on board with GOA for a little bit. All the age-ups are coming through, and GOA going to throw in a dock on the backside. Just looking to bide his time. Everybody minding their own business. Now, if you didn't tune into the first game, that is perfectly okay. I'll update you on the rules. For every king that you kill, you get a point. If it's the first king that goes down this game, you get another point. And if you kill a king, or if you kill that king, any king, in fact, if you kill any king while you're in the feudal age, or in the dark age, if you somehow manage to do that, you get an extra point on top of that. So you get two points for a Feudal Age King kill, and three points if, it, if it's the first one. I know it's a bit complicated, but just, just think of it like stacking. You're stacking kills on top of each other. When it comes to victory points, there's actually not a lot of points in a victory anymore. Uh, on the initial rule proposal, we said 10 points. 10 points for a victory. But we actually had, I actually had someone message me, somebody that's in this game, and they said, hey, Drongo, uh, I know this is a bit weird, but I did a thousand simulations of the rules that you've got and it showed that if a person wins a game, that they have a 99.7% chance of going through to the finals. I was like, well, that is very, um, 
That that is very good of you, and a little bit autistic, but good. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I thank them, and then we we change the points based on that because it, the reality is that once people realise that if I win a game, then I I, I guaranteed get through to the finals at ninety nine point seven percent chance. Well, everybody's just going to camp and try and win the game, and we don't want that. We want them to get out there. We want them. We want action, and that's exactly uh, why. That's exactly why we did it. But. Uh, uh, I'm not going to expose who it was, uh, but I am going to say that they are... They're currently on this map. They are in this game. And uh, they may be on the east side of the map over here. All right. Well, GUA has expanded out towards the middle. He's looking for gold, but... <laughs> Poor GUA. Kaup is coming for an early visit. There's a part of me that really hopes that, that Kaup is just going sailing past GUA and going to go on down towards B and... And look to distract him. And can I, can I just compliment right now how good this biome looks? Huge shout out to Biddlin for coming up with this map. But also a huge shout out to the devs for just coming up with this biome. What a gorgeous biome that this looks right now. This this looks like it's something out of... <laughs> mm. 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 That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a tough... <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh... Yeah, it ha look, it happens to the <laughs> poor GUA, dude. What, what percentage did I give him to win? I think it was zero, wasn't it? It was zero. Yeah, it's zero. This is a tough life right now. <laughs> look at the army his enemy's got. Men at arms, scout goes down. Second battering ram going to be coming out. Age up's coming through. Avely reaching the castle age already. A little bit of a fast castle. Oh, is that why he moved out? Did he drop down a, a, uh, a monastery or something in the middle? GUA trying to age up. Look at this. The king's inside. Now, we could just run the king away and look to go to somewhere a little bit greener, but I think Kalp's just looking for space. He wants he wants to make sure that his enemies are further right, further away than uh, than what GUA is at the moment. And GUA, obviously, is so late to age up. Naturally, he's going to come for him. Kaparch also reaching the castle age. We see he's going for the king's palace. So, nice little double fast castle over on this east side. Do we see a third one? Not quite just yet. No indication that Blade's going up. And the king's on the move. King is on the move. Oh, does he go for a transport ship? That would actually be Giga Chat. Transport ship to the north. No, nah, nah. Where do you, where do you even go? Th there's nowhere you can really go. Like maybe, maybe here. And you, you just like you you message Puppy Paw and you're like, hey Puppy Paw, um, do you, do you, do you want to do you want to be friends? You, and and you know what, Puppy Paw would probably be like, yeah, sure, man, come on up here. And then he just immediately just kills the king. So th this is great for B at this point because B is just. I mean, his nearest neighbor is GUA, and then his nearest neighbor is Kalp, and they're fighting against each other. So B's just super happy. Two TCs, third one's come down, walls are coming up, and he, he's just biding his time. He's having a great time down here. Four rams. GUA looking to throw down a stable, going to play the defensive game here. And this is where it gets so tough, because now the H-up's coming through. How does how does Kalp afford all this? And the answer, I think, is just simply because he he built the town center quite early on. I just I feel terrible for GUA. Maybe he, it was just busy IRL, hasn't had much time to get into the game recently, and he's just kind of jumped in, gone. Oh, all right, this this is the time for my session. All right, over on that east side of the map, palace guard starting to come out. Villagers moving out here as well. Keep in mind, Blade is looking for an age up. All these vills are moving towards a gold, I suspect. Where are these bills going? I'm curious to see where they go, but the battering rams are making their way downtown. Uh, it's a few battering rams, six battering rams. King has evacuated. King is out the back. He's on the move. He's making his way up towards the north side. Bit of an interesting decision to head up there. He's on foot. I repeat, the suspect is on foot. And with this, the landmarks will be going down and the threat of GUA is significantly reduced. But does he look to escape to the country? Don't see any transport ships out just yet. B reaches the castle edge. Ops for the Istanbul Imperial Palace. Definitely the right choice in this game. The first of the sacred sites stepped on by Kalp's relic or prelate holding relic. No, relic holding prelate. There we go. Still somehow GUA managing to siege through all of these battering rams. Definitely trying his best to, to keep the base alive. King under pressure. King has been walled in. He walled in GUA's king. Oh my God. G <laughs> oh no, 
your GUA. He won't in GUA is king. <laughs> hey, buddy. How you doing? Uh, get him. Yeah, go. G <laughs> Poor GUA. We're going to change from his perspective before he he, uh, he he dies. Rest in peace, little guy. It was a, that's a transport ship. No. <laughs> you were so close. You were so close. GUA was trying with the great escape. Oh, he was so close. Oh, the poor guy. Meanwhile, on the north side, it looks like we got a little bit of a double team action. We've got Puppy Paw coming from the north. And on the south side, Avery's applying pressure. They're after the king. The king's locked in the town center. Blade yet to reach that castle age. No access to the, to the men at arms. No access to the crossbows. He's in trouble. This town center is going down. Poor GUA. Poor GUA. And, and that's just it. I mean, the reality is when people... When you fall a little bit behind, people will see that. And it's just like, you know, you're looking for the weakest of the pack. Show me the weakest of the pack and immediately, you know, that's it. And that's exactly what happened. And look, look at this. We've got Puppy Paw actually pushing away Avery's forces. You can see how intent they are on fighting over this kill. They want Blade so badly. They're buying Blade time. Blade with plenty of resources in the bank, but doesn't have enough to age up yet. Did lose access to this gold out here. The keep did come down from Averly. And meanwhile, this fight is happening. There are players who are slowly taking over this game. One in particular sits in the center of the map. 171 gold on the high trade house. Second one down on the south side. Slowly building more and more production. Plenty of archery rangers coming in. And now those palace guards are repelled. Trebuchet is also out now as well for Averly as he looks to push on Kapoch. Keep is under pressure. We've, we've got palace guards that have run all the way down now to Kapoch from Puppy Paw. A huge distance. The knight's now out on the move. So the first kill's gone over to Cal. He gets first blood in this game, locking in that king. Poor GUA. And the king is on the move. Oh, Blade's going for a run. Blade's on the move. He's escaped from the town center. He was inside the TC. TC's gone down. King on the move. He's looking to escape. But Averly is on the chase. Needs to make sure he's using that treason ability. Remember, all kings have the ability to use treason, which temporarily reveals the location of all living kings. <gasps> but he walks into the stealth forest and he spots it. The king is under pressure. Blade might be our second victim this game almost seems certain at this point as B reaches the Imperial Age. Our first player to hit Imperial Age. The King gets surrounded and Blade goes down. Our second player eliminated this game is Blade. Five, 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 five. Averly picking up the extra population space. He's going to be extra happy with it. But the question is going to be whether or not it matters as Kapoch is hunting. Averly on 92 pop. Kapoch on 97. He's got to deal with Puppy Poor in the north. And it definitely feels like Puppy Poor and Core are... Uh, not necessarily ignoring each other, but Core not really, or Puppy Paw not really giving him that attention that he so desires. And you can see that Averly's provoked Puppy Paw. He said, that was my kill. You've stolen my kill, and now I'm going to come for you. Plenty of upgrades coming through on these palace guards. But at the same time, Puppy Paw's picked up his own. Knights moving around the map. Where are they? We'll look to see if we can find them. There they are. Looking to, to poke and prod. Into the base of Kapoch. Palace Guard on Palace Guard. Numbers are looking pretty good. Sacred Site captured over in the south. Remember, B is slowly building. Two games in a row. The purple player has been a slow and silent machine of death. I suspect it will be the case today with B. Continues to mass up on that south corner. We'll do a quick status check. See where these players are currently sitting with their village accounts. 111 for Puppy Paw. Core on 77. Kapoch on 79. Averly on 56. Not looking good for Averly. 67 for Cap. And B on 136 villagers. He has boomed his complete heart out. Man, arms get cleaned up. Janissaries have been upgraded. He's got elite Janissaries now coming out. Could look for trade. Sacred Site now getting taken over on that east side. And all kings look to be secure at this point. We'll try and locate them all. First king 
inside the town center. Second king on the move towards this keep in the center. And Averly is mobile here, fighting underneath the keep. He's got a second keep here as well, which will look to help him out. He's trying to keep himself alive up against Puppy Paw. Huge economy advantage here for Puppy Paw against Averly. More than double the villager count. Throws down a second town center in the middle of the map. Keep in mind, he's got Song Dynasty to provide him plenty of those villagers. But the double trap really starting to hurt. And Kapoch finds that position from that eastern corner and pushes out with his legs against the wall. Jumps off towards that direction of Averly. But now, the battering rams begin coming out. And the first of the Spaskai has come through. Core very happy with his position at this point. Definitely fighting for the late game. And now B going to be looking to push over on this east, or rather west side of the map. A lot of units here. 200, 200. Cap only sitting at 99 out of 160. Keep in mind, Cap has picked up a kill already this game. He's got the elves back in the corner. Good, good luck ever touching that king. I'm not kidding you. This thing is an insane... It is ludicrous. It is so ludicrous how how this landmark even works. This landmark not only has 7,500 health compared to the normal health of a landmark, five, which is well, 7,000 for a town center, but 5,000 for a, a normal landmark. It has an aura that reduces the damage that all buildings take by 33%, including itself. And what that means is that when you're trying to damage this thing, it just stays alive. He puts the relic inside as well. The only problem is you're quite close to the coast and you can throw down stone walls. But even if you do, there's always a back door. And people, well, you know how it is. If there's a back door, people always want to try and take it. Slowly but steadily, Core continues building up. He's walled in the king. He's happy. He's safe. Remember the Spaskaya Tower? unlocks the ability to build stone walls for the Rus. And that's exactly what Core does. Sacred Sites. Applied pressure on this south side and Puppy Paw reaches Imperial. His position is increasing in strength. As we reach this 23rd minute, keep in mind now that we've crossed that 20 minute threshold, if there is a desync, the desync player just simply has to say, sorry guys, that's it. And... Everyone just continues on. The admin does have the ability to award uh, consolation points, I think is what we call it. It's like a consolation prize. It's like, oh, well, look, you didn't win, but hey, you were in a good spot. Have a few extra points for, for being a stand-up guy, that sort of thing. But they are rarely awarded. I will say that much. Sipahi now. Moving out for B. He's up to 34 Sipahi here. Only going with the veteran Sipahi. Yet to upgrade them to elite. Attacks now focusing on this east side. Kapoch under pressure. Keep in mind the king is back here, nice and safe in, in the main town center. These numbers starting to look good in the north for Puppy Paw. Posture's sitting just above core. And there's a way through. I mean, the, the king is just one run away. And that's the thing to remember. He's, he's got the gate very specifically towards the south. More attacks happening over towards this east side. Averly. Throwing down plenty of town centers and plenty of keeps. Look at this move by Averly. Very smart. Look at the keeps coming down from Averly. He says, I don't want to die. I'm going to throw down the more keeps I put here, the less likely someone is to attack me. But speaking of keeps, he's trying his best to hold on, but the, the, the numbers are looking very good for B. Cap, 77 bills for the moment. Still yet to build up. No Palace of Swabia means that it is very tough for him. He throws down a couple of extra town centers. That's going to help him with his production. Trebs firing down. Not a whole lot of damage though. The Genissary is unfolding. Action all over this map right now. A little bit of a lull towards this north. Puppy Paw maxed out. 140 eco units. 60 military pop. And now real pr real pressure starting to be applied to Kapoch. You thought early on Averly was doing a good job. Averly's lost his entire entire base, but he stays mobile. This is what I love about this new mode that we've got. Do not be tethered by the landmark. Don't think for a second that you need to keep your landmarks. It's no longer about landmark. It's now about kings.
keep the king alive and you survive. Sibai now running through. Forward keep comes down. A lot of production here from B. He's looking to expand out his territory. He's maxed out 200, 200. Up against Capocho sitting at 99. The consequence of spawning close to people is that if you do fight them and you don't win quickly, swiftly, decisively, is that this can happen. Men are starting to build though. Capocho, not enough resources to move to Imperial. Struggling to keep his head above water. Are we really going to have to listen to these houses get attacked? L let me switch. Who are we going to watch? Let's let's go to Cap's perspective. That seems like a good perspective. More production coming down. A little bit of a run on the backside. He wants to snipe out the king. He wants the king. The king's in the keep. Fire lances, elite. Palace guards, elite. He's looking to try and snag it away from B. He knows that B's a little bit preoccupied. Villagers, he's going to eat them alive. Battering Ram's moving through. Remember, he's got the Yuan Dynasty together with Siege Greased Axles. Makes everything move really fast. But it looks like both of the players may be aware of each other's presences. King is on the move. King is on the move. Kapoch escapes the king out the back door. He's got the ability to increase that movement speed if he wants to. And Puppy Paw spots it. Where is he heading? He's heading to the shoreline. Is there a transport ship? There's no transport ships just yet. The king is trying to make a move. B is completely unaware of the chaos that is happening under his nose. The king trying his best. Puppy Paw looking to loop around. There's a little bit of a juke off. He pops the, the movement speed. He's on his way towards the outpost. No, he continues heading up towards the north side. He's got the speed, but for how much longer? He's got the legs. Go, king, go. Run, king. The king returns back. He says, actually, it was a psych out. He tries to make his way back towards the town center. He looks like he's probably going to be able to survive for a little bit longer, but the palace guards, together with the fire lancers, will be able to take out this king's palace. There's not a lot of health on it. 5,000 health. But now the Sipahi are going to be joining the battle. They've realized. They've realized. Sacred Sight's getting taken slowly. And the Palace Guard's doing a really good job of just holding back all of the Sipahi. You can see that... Oh, the king! Oh, wait, where did the king go? The king's back in the keep! I, I totally missed it! My eyes... Oh, my God. My eyes are off. <laughs> i got to pay more attention to the keep. To the king. Oh, my Lord. I didn't even see what the health was on that king. The king! He's on the move again! Watch out! <laughs> Protect the king! He's, he's oh, he, oh, he gets in the outpost! <laughs> he needs, he needs. <laughs> I'm like losing my mind. <coughs> the king goes down. Oh god! The king, puppy poor assassinates Capoch. Oh my lord! That poor king. He tried his best to get out of there, but unfortunately, it was just a case of whack a mole. And unfortunately, puppy poor whacks the mole. Puppy poor snags the kill, and B comes out empty-handed. The consequence of, well, not having a big enough army to uh, actually push back an equally vicious lion. Meanwhile, throughout all of this, somebody has been booming. And you may have remembered him from earlier. It's Averly. Averly up to 94 villagers at the moment. Puppy Paw going to be really happy with that extra 50 population. We start to see walls coming up on this north side. Players now walling up against each other. Now remember, there are no alliances here. But this, this is not an alliance. This is just two players who don't want to fight against each other. That is different. Alliances are people actively working together. But just remember, Puppy Paw takes a fight. Puppy Paw increases in population. Puppy Paw decides he doesn't like Core anymore. And Core comes up empty-handed. Puppy Paw can utilize that extra population he's got from investing into all of these units to take out Core. And that's how we give that advantage over to more aggressive players. We say, you can camp it up all you like, Core, but until you get out on the battlefield and start taking out enemy kings, then you're going to be in a sad state of affairs. Now, remember, in addition to getting that extra 50 population space for killing the king, you can see up here, Puppy Paw's got it. Kalp has got it. In addition to that extra 50 population space, you also get points. And points are good. You like points. There's the king. Safe in the keep for now. But you can see all the battering rams moving. The nest of bees firing off towards the center of mass. A lot of units making their way towards Averly, and it feels like we've just got 2v1 on 2v1, but they're just hunting for kings. The consequence of being in the middle of the map is that people are just looking for you, but 
The Chinese holding on with the nest of bees and the keeps underneath here. Good luck ever trying to get between this. He holds on for dear life and he's looking very solid. Horsemen over on that west side. The mass of units up towards the north. We got ourselves a, a, an interesting little trade direction here. I don't know what this is all about. Where's he trying to trade to? Up towards this dock, maybe. And indeed, Avery manages to clean up this attack from B. Keep in mind, that was a 2v1. But at the same time, we got a counterattack down towards the south side. Kalp says, I'm back, baby. Look at the walls coming up from Kalp. It's looking like something out of Age of Empires 3. I feel like I'm watching... Who was that guy in Age of Empires 3 that used to wall like crazy? Oh my god, it was terrible. Oh, he, he would wall like 15 layers on every map. Oh my god, I... Oh gosh. Not, it wasn't Kinesi. It wasn't Donati. Corix! Yes, thank you, Snooper. Corix. Oh my god, Corix. Oh, that was so painful. Just lose already, buddy. Just lose. But not today. Not for Kalp. Numbers here looking pretty solid for B. He's able to hold on. I, I think B's going to be really disappointed he didn't pick up that kill over on the east side. And you can see how much he's struggling trying to get in towards this southern position. The keep's been repaired up com completely. And Puppy Paw looking to make work of that enemy Chinese player. All of the Fire Lancers now coming through. Managed to clean out the nest of bees. A single nest of bees remains, but not for long. And with the nest of bees down, it's going to open the opportunity for a little bit of, uh, well, how do you say? A little bit of battering rams. But hold on. I've got my suspicions about what we're about to see. I think you might look to put the king up on top. You can see the defense coming in. Springle's looking to snipe away the battering rams. At the same time, we've got counterattacks happening towards the south side. Sepahi moving across the map. Sacred site's being neutralized. And it looks like the keep holds a little bit longer. Averly is an actual defense god right now. You are crazy if you think you can take down Averly. So many keeps sitting here, happily defending. These, these aren't any keeps, by the way. These are Chinese keeps. Up towards the north side. Still the blockade happens. It definitely seems like Puppy and Core have become good friends in this game. I just wait here for the, the shiv to come out. We're still early on, 33 minutes through. And Core's been trying to cause havoc on the map. But now he's under attack from the south. Men at arms moving through. Remember, Core's king is in the Spaskaya Tower. It's quite a way to go through. Attack on the south side of the map. A lot of Sapahi down here. Remember that the king is safe in the L's back. You can see the importance of these landmarks. And oh, we've got trade ships coming out. Nice little trade that we've got coming through. Now, trade ships, how much pop do they cost? They're two population a, a, a pop. Two pop a pop? Two pop a ship. So they're pretty expensive on the population. But you do get wood and gold. So that's pretty decent. And I'm sure if B knew about it, he'd be looking to stop it. But he doesn't know. Core. Finally under pressure. From his... I was going to say from his ally in the north. I mean, we don't know if it's his ally. There's a part of me that just... I'm, I'm getting a little bit sus up here. I, I haven't been reading the chat, so I, I don't know whether they've mentioned it in the chat, but the, our rules state, if, if you form an alliance it has to be overt and it ha there has to be an actual reason for it so you have th there has to be a, a significant mutual threat and th that definitely hasn't happened yet in this game a significant mutual threat would be defined as like a sacred site victory uh, coming through oh my lord the great bombards are out the reign of terror coming through look at the mangoes look at they they're about to fire down here on all the genissaries in the back nice little dodges Gens do go down. Bombard's firing down. And now another attack coming through. Everybody wants a piece of Averly. Who's going to give it to him? Averly's going to give it to him. Look at look at the amount. They, they just keep on coming through. They just keep on trying for Averly. He's not going to let him. You can't break the Averly. 
You can't shake the snake. You can't Waverly the Averly. I, I, give me something for Averly, guys. I need something for Averly. He's starting to hold it down right now. He's becoming the hero. He survived many a fights. 68 vils. I don't even know where he goes. Where does he keep his villagers? <laughs> you can't disable the Averly. <laughs> I do like that one. You can't disable the Averly. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, a little bit of a problem for Averly now. The Trebs. The Trebs in the north. But they get completely evaporated. Down on the south side, though. Randy. Randy. Randy, watch out, Randy. Randy, you meant to get the chairs out. <laughs> Randy Orton off the top rope. He says, see you later, mate. So much damage coming out from those Reboldequins. You love to see them. Huge damage. Good night, sweet prince. Look how tanky these things are as well. They got the 10 melee armor. Surviving against these melee troops. I wish we could see how many units these guys have killed. Because surely it's triple digits. Averly still trying to face off here. Trying to keep himself safe. I think he expands to the south now. He's got so many keeps that are up here, though. Chinese keeps finally taking out the keeper B. And now Core going to be looking to put pressure on from the south. At this point, I'm just waiting. I'm, I'm honestly just waiting out for a snipe on this king. Because any use of treason is going to expose that king. And it's like, you... I think that there's a part of Puppy Paw that's using Core as like... And I think this is just like the, the genius thing of Puppy Paw. It's part of the reason, for anybody who doesn't remember, Puppy Paw won the very first Outback Octagon. And it was through techniques like this, where you're not his enemy, but you're not his ally, and he just uses you as a useful idiot. And that's exactly what's happening to Core right now. And Core, don't be the useful idiot. You, you got to get out there. You got to make a man for yourself, buddy. All right, well, the attacks continue on that north side. Look at the battering ram numbers, though. And Core actually getting a pretty decent push going here. It's looking quite meaningful. But the resources on this map are starting to become barren. Trade for B, looking pretty good. He's up to 110 gold here. Not the best trade that you can get. Ideally, you want to move that market. Where is it? He's got a, his home market sitting on this dock here. Big attacks coming through, though. Men at arms. Battering rams making their way through onto the backside. There's plenty of production back here, though. It's going to be a long time before those battering rams really get through all of it. And more. Look at the rams just sitting out here for Kalp. Just looking to absorb any hits they can. Now, my question is, where is the army of B? And there it is. Looks like we might have an, another 2v1 coming through. Averly trying his best to keep himself above water. Keep the head above water, rather. He's honestly done an incredible job. I'm so impressed with Averly. It, it's not like it was particularly epic. It was just really solid. Units now starting to stream through for Core. He's got plenty of resources in the bag. And now B starts to push in on that gate from the south. A little bit of a dock going to get exposed here. I don't know if this is the dock that he's trading to. I think it probably is. Trade ship going to be coming up empty-handed here. He's going to have to hand it in somewhere else. And now that push comes in on the north side. Remember the king is safely held inside the Ellsback Palace. It's a long way to get to the Ellsback. But a lot of units out at the moment for Core. And now Puppy Paw. Holding on. Still for the moment. A lot of villagers moving around the backside here for Puppy Paw though. He could be looking to pick up a sneaky little kill. If you're going for, for a kill on Averly, how do you even do it? I mean, you could probably roll in with like 8 Bombards, 10 Bombards take down the keep and just instantly snipe the king you'd have to come in from this west side and he's got complete vision look at the surround he's got not to mention the fact that the imperial palace just came up the wall has been broken push is happening on both sides a lot of streltsy here 38 streltsy plenty of battering rams we're really seeing their efficiency <laughs> look at the battering rams coming out from Kalp Kalp now pushing out with his own rams it's war of the rams and we see the stone wall does get up, but very quickly it will go down. Numbers still looking pretty good here, though, for Kalp. And B starting to struggle. That extra 50 po population 
would have given him such an advantage down here. And Puppy Paw just biding his time. Sitting on 11k food at the moment. 5k gold. And the push is happening. Streltsy slowly get getting run down. He's got quite a bit back here. 33 still. The battering rams are coming back over. Four mangoes in the back. Big shots down onto the battering rams. He just keeps spamming out these mangoes. Mango did go down there. Streltsy. Streltsy. Oh, Randy Orton off the top rope. That was, that was about 2,000 resources that just went down there. You can see why people like mangonels. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage right there. And Kalp holding on for dear life. Gets the rewall back in. Holding on the 2v1. And we got ourselves a little bit of a, a little bit of a stalemate here. My hero though, it's Averly. Keep in mind Averly did pick up a kill early on. He took out Blade. That means he can max out to 250 pop. He's definitely on the way. Sitting at 192 of 210 at the moment. So not long to go. Still no sign of these two starting to fight. And I think that's something that, that I will intentionally call out at this point. Just because, well, it, can't, it gets a little bit awkward when you've got this many units and you know that there's a king sitting right here. And it's right there. So I'll have to have a chat to the players about it. Because that definitely... We're not going to reprimand anybody. I can say that much right now. But uh, we'll just... We'll try and make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, that, 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 that doesn't happen again. That that doesn't happen again. Because ideally, we want people fighting against each other. And I appreciate that, that Core is facing off down here on the south. And maybe Puppy wants to give him his... Uh, give him his moment but at the same <laughs> at the same time the person he's fighting against is getting 2v1 and he's holding on pretty well I'll be honest Calp doing a really good job holding on here over on that east side though another attack coming through battering rams making their way in with just a handful of Sapahi. here you can see just how many units are sitting in here a lot of fishing boats down here Reboldicans break through with the battering rams. And we've got Puppy Paw on the move. Puppy Paw looking to shut down water trade here. There's a lot of buildings. Core's base is starting to expand massively. You can see Puppy Paw doesn't really have anywhere to go. Puppy Paw with great vision. Keep that in mind. He's got access to the Imperial Palace. So would easily see over to here. Baoshwan's starting to move past. Mangadel's big shot off. Reboldequins taking it out completely. And it, you can see how hard it is for them to take down Kalp. That extra 50 pop is giving him so much flexibility in the defense. Allows him to keep a pretty solid economy while being in two places at once. So at, at this point... Oh man, I, I, I'm, I'm starting to cognitively anchor now to, to the, uh, to what's happening up here. What's happening here? What's happening here? I mean, I, I suspect Puppy might be looking for a, for a wonder. I think that could be the case. And maybe he's just biding his time waiting for another kill to happen. And then he'll look to go for it. But I can't help but feel like this king, he's got a plan for it. I know that much. I just, I, I just don't want to disparage too much. Until we see his final motive. Puppy deleting some villagers. Adding more military to it. You can see he's up to one four, or 243 now out of 250. Could have something in mind. Avely starting to camp it out as well. Everybody reaching max population. Very close to it. And we enter into a bit of a stalemate here. Two sacred sites currently held by Avely. Third sacred site, held by B. It'd be suicide for him to try and take out that third sacred site. Towards the south, the cleanup starts happening from Cal. 
He's got that defensive angle. And now Core going to start looking to push. Puppy biding his time. Huge amount of fire lances. 62 fire lances. Remember this entire time, his enemies are trading out units constantly. Spending their resources. Puppy not spending a thing. Biding his time. Let's core do his bidding for him. His useful idiot. Now the pushback gonna happen. Plenty of Reboldequins back here. Triple, quadruple. Oh, baby, a quadruple. Great bombards coming out. It's a beautiful siege comp. We actually saw a very similar composition come out recently with B against Beastie on Highview. Use the exact same composition. Reboldequin together with the bombards. Fire Lance is on the move. Fire Lance is on the move. Fire Lance is on the move. Puppy goes for it. Good night, sweet prince. Oh, manages to get the king back inside the Spaskaya Tower. He's guarding the front gate. We knew that there was a plan. You've got to trust the plan, guys. And the king now comes out. Rest in peace. Good night, sweet prince. And he gets on top of the wall. Stays alive a little bit longer. Can the, can the bombards not shoot up here? Does the king live? He's got his ice skates on. He's down. He's up. Surely the... Live, King! Live! Live! The Bombards! <laughs> and Kor goes down. All of his units now. Just chilling out. In the base of his opponent, Puppy Paw assassinates Kor. It was his plan all along. Just when you thought Anakin had the high ground and it was relevant. It turns out it didn't even matter all along. Actually, it was Obi-Wan who had the high ground. We saw it coming a mile away. And Puppy Paw now heading towards 300 military pop or 300 population. Picks his next target. Where does he take all of these? I've got a suspicion. <laughs> Look at the amount of units that are down here, though. Avery. The triple keep. Gate wall. The, the great wall gatehouse. Just a few nest of bees in here. Four nest of bees, I think. Five nest of bees. He's heading north. He's looking to meet his Chinese opponent. Remember that in addition to having an extra 50 pop over the top of him, he's also been saving up plenty of resources, biding his time. If you make these silly little alliances with people, expect to get burned. And it's exactly what we saw. You're silly to assume that people will be faithful to their word. Nine nest of bees coming out for Puppy. A huge military here. He's got more in queue. Rallying units out. 107 villagers. 154 military pop and the battering rams continue. Oh my lord. Kalp is a ram. For, he's a ram enjoyer. 25 rams at the moment. A ram's too good. I mean, when I start seeing 25 rams, I start to wonder. Like, maybe rams are kind of good. Trade happening down here for B. On the top side, we've also got Puppy Paw doing a little bit of trade himself. 149's coming through for him. Where's he trading to? He's trading to the, the, the neutral dock of a, of a player long gone. Puppy Paw actually has 13 bombards. Now, I don't know if you guys are good at counting or not, but where I come from, that's a lot. That's a lot of bombards. Nice little cleanup on the front side. I love the way that these players are trading with their respective siege. Battering ram numbers continue to climb. Springle's getting chased around. He's going to be able to get them through the gate. Don't get blocked by the rams. He does a little bit of a trade. He says, hey, you want some rams instead? Plenty of units here. Gets the rewall in. Cap doing an amazing job with the rewall. Can I just say? He gets the rewall down within seconds every single time. And now the most made unit here from Kalp is not the battering ram. In fact, it's the spearman. We've got three corners. The first corner held by B. The second corner held by Kalp. The third corner held by Puppy. Oh, 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 my lord. 
Oh my lord. And the fourth corner. Not really held by anybody, but I guess we can call it Averly for now. He throws down another keep. Why not? I mean, it makes sense. The more the merrier. Welcome to Tasmania, ladies and gentlemen. This is why I was a little bit fearful of this Ellsback Palace being placed where it is. The best spot for this would have been around like here-ish with a whole bunch of stone walls around it. And then maybe some outposts, maybe another keep. Look at the way that he's playing. Look at the way he's staying so far back. No threat of line of sight spotting him out until this point right here. And by this point, it's already too late. The push is happening from the front. Keep in mind, Cap's got that extra 50 population over B. So over time, Cap will be able to grind through B, especially if there's a 2v1 happening. We missed this. I do apologize. A huge amount of units have gone down right here. But unfortunately, we got bigger fish to fry. Who's whistling right now? Who's whistling? It sounded like a Chinese whistle. Is, does he have the scout in there? Is there a scout in here? Does the scout whistle? Was it the boats that whistled? Surely not. All right, well, Cap's going to be focused over here. Meanwhile, the Baoshuans have spotted out the Ellsback Palace. They're going to start working their magic. And the drops are coming through. Run, King! Run! Now is your only chance. If you want to survive, you have to run right now. Cap completely oblivious. The Fire Lance has come out, and it's already too late. The surround has happened. The entrance completely blocked off. The Fire Lance is now looping. The Bombard Fire! The Ellsback Palace is down to half. Emergency repairs comes through. The King is going to be going down. The King is alive. Run, King. Run. Kalp fighting for his last chance, his last hope. He gets assassinated and Puppy Paw takes another kill from this game. Puppy Paw cleaning up this map right now. Assassinations happening left, right, and center. Immediately, Puppy Paw begins adding in additional units up to 303 population puppy paw actually backdooring now the question is where are the other kings puppy paw knows it's pretty close honestly it's pretty close i wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a round two let's see what he does does he dare do it his biggest threat right now is someone he looked to attack multiple times. Remember, these guys were fighting over blade five, 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 five. And keep in mind that Puppy is indeed trading. All of these resources coming through is going up for round two. Puppy Paw with the ultimate and snipes. This is the consequence of ignoring your back door. If you think you're safe from the water, you are not. Attacks now coming through. Averly pushing in on B. And it all goes back to that earlier kill. Averly somehow managed to find his way through. An extra bit of population over the top, but look what we've got moving across the map. Another attack towards this top side. Puppy Paw sitting at 350 population at the moment. We've got another drop coming in. Now, when, when does B see this? These fishing boats have got a long range, a long radius. So there's a good chance that even if he gets, if, even if he spots it out, he'll be able to evacuate the king in time. But where does he take the king? I mean, the best place is probably to the front here. A keep like this. That way your reinforcements are, are going to be rallied towards it. But now all of those units are going to be coming out. We've got another king attempt. Puppy Paw looking to completely destroy all enemies in his path. We talked earlier about the fact the puppy paw, the king. Oh my lord, the bombards. Oh, the king was exposed for a, a hot minute right there. Second one under pressure. Third king's going down. King, the king, the king. He lives a little bit longer. He escapes over into the into another keep. At the same time, we've got a dead drop coming in on this backside. Looking to fight it out. The king. Still these bombards. So much damage. The king. Puppy paw assassinates Averly. He failed to protect the king. One player remains against puppy paw. 
He's taken out player after player after player this game. He has been relentless. And now he looks upon the last remaining player and says, You want to play? Defending his championship and coming into the first game that he plays, looking to stamp his authority. Puppy Paw, the king of Tasmania. A little bit of a death drop. King in the Seagate Castle. The snipes are coming. What do we got here? We got six bombards. We got fire lances. We got another two bombards in here. And now the emplacement begins to fire down. King not yet on the move. King not, not yet on the move. All of the units are on the front line. Needs to apply pressure so that his enemy is not distracted. But now the fire lances are through. The fire lances are through. Puppy Paul looking to clean up the last player. The king escapes. Run, king, run. He pops the movement speed. He's out of there. He says, see you later. Two minute cooldown, but I'll take it. I'll move on to greener pastures. And indeed, he pops that speed. He's off like a Mongol, like a Mongol, <laughs> like a Mongol horseman into the night. Manages to escape just in the nick of time. And heads towards a keep a little bit closer to the front. But I got bad news for you, ladies and gentlemen. There's an army coming. Puppy Paw maxed out at 400 population right now. Sitting on 283 military. Puppy Paw destroys all who come before him. It's Puppy Paw, baby. The king is under pressure. Hand cannoneers. Fire lances, battering rams, everything. He's got the nice little attack on the backside. It's not even going to matter. Puppy Paw on the Chinese looks to take this second game of Outback Octagon 2 in amazing style. Taking out not one, not two, not three, not four, but five players with the victory. Incredible performance there from Puppy Paw, and quite honestly, that may be the best performance we see the entire tournament. He cleaned the absolute field. You cannot, you cannot dismiss his skill. He took out Averly. He took out Kalp. He took out Blade. Actually, no, that was, that was Averly. He took out B. He took out, I think it was Kapoch. <laughs> he literally just took out everybody. He took out Core. Wow. What a game. What an absolute game. Fellas, I hope you've enjoyed this second game of Outback Octagon 2. Let's take a quick look at the timeline, get an idea of the total unit count here. You can see that Puppy Paw, well, I can't help but feel like he was a little bit enabled by Core. At any point, Core could have turned his attention towards Puppy Paw, who was just sitting, waiting in the wings, but it never happened. It never happened, and Puppy Paw, well... He took his useful idiot and he said, thank you very much. I hope you guys have enjoyed this Outback Octagon game and we'll catch you guys in the next one.